When it comes to ancient human lineages, few are as genetically distinct and ancient as the Aboriginal Australians and Papuans. These populations trace their ancestry back over 50,000 years, making them among the oldest continuous cultures on Earth. After modern humans left Africa, one of the earliest waves of migration followed a southern coastal route through South Asia and reached Sahul, the ancient landmass that once connected Australia, New Guinea, and Tasmania. Following the end of the last glacial maximum, rising sea levels isolated them from the rest of Eurasia. With no significant gene flow into Sahul for tens of thousands of years, these populations underwent a genetic bottleneck, leading to reduced genetic diversity in some regions. The arrival of Europeans brought devastating changes. Disease, violence, displacement, and assimilation caused a dramatic population collapse in many Aboriginal Australian communities. In some areas, populations declined by more than 80% within a single century. For this video, I have prepared the genomes of 10 Aboriginal Australians and Papuans from the Human Origins dataset. I used my trait predictor tool to analyze their raw DNA, predicting phenotypes and likelihood of various conditions. According to FST analysis, Aboriginal Australians are closest to Papuans, followed by various Central and South Asians. They are extremely divergent from all human groups, though, due to being heavily inbred, they are furthest from Sub-Saharan Africans. With the Papuans, we see the same story. They are also closest to Australians, although not particularly close to them either, due to extreme inbreeding. Central and South Asians follow the Australians on the FST chart, being the second most closely related group of humans to Papuans. The most distant group to Papuans, as is the case with Australians, are Sub-Saharan Africans. Australians are anywhere from 5 to 6.5% archaic according to QBDM, with this model showing 6.3% archaic human ancestry. The Papuans, like the Australians, also score 6.3%. Now let's dive into their trait predictor results. All 10 individuals are male. Eye color coded them by the origin of their ancestry. The Australian samples are colored in purple while the Papuans are colored in green. The most common predicted phenotype with trait predictor was Australoid, but South Asian Carnotid was also present. Eye colors were evenly split between medium and dark brown. Hair colors were uniformly black. Keep in mind that this doesn't take into account the unique TRP1 mutation that sometimes leads to blonde hair in certain Papuans, so some of these people could in fact have lighter hair despite being predicted to have black hair. The most common predicted hair textures were kinky and curly. Most samples were also predicted to have snub noses and low odds of male pattern baldness. Every sample was predicted to have high odds of autism. Some samples carried the Eurasian LCT variants for lactase persistence. Most samples were predicted to have low levels of empathy. The Australians and Papuans had low odds of atrial fibrillation, very high predisposition to cardiovascular risks, and very high odds of type 2 diabetes. The Australians and Papuans had very high odds of depression, very high odds of bipolar disorder type 1, and average odds of Alzheimer's. None of the samples carried any risk variants for hemoglobin E disease. None of the samples carried any HLA variants for autoimmune risks. The Australians and Papuans had average odds of allergies. None of the samples carried any risk variants for polycythemia vera in JA K2. Every sample carried risk variants for testicular cancer in the KITLG gene. The samples had high odds of syncope. The Aboriginal Australians and Papuans had average levels of vitamin D, lower levels of LDL cholesterol, and medium to lower levels of HDL cholesterol. You can purchase their genomes in 23andMe format from the link in description of the video.